Uh, real quickly here, we're in the process of aligning the IRS and uh, we're getting ready to roll. I kind of set the music up a little wrong, that's on me, uh, but we're uh, seven minutes from the alignment of the IRS or, and uh, we'll be ready to roll to Jakarta, Indonesia. Currently, we are sitting up here in Sh or, uh, uh, Singapore, or I say Shanghai be a little longer of a trip than we all planned but uh we're sitting in the 747 400 uh this is the free one that comes with x plane now it's modified by the sparks 43 group uh but it's still free they're up to version two uh feel free to head over check them out folks it's a great plane there's still some quirks and bugs with it. They'll always be like with any airplane, but overall folks, it's a great aircraft. So if you're all ready, I know I am. Let's get flying with Mike. <clears throat> like I said, we are in the alignment right now. It's approximately a 10 minute process in this bird. We're down to seven. So let's continue where I was, and that was putting the flight plan in. All right, so we've already got all of this taken care of. We'll go through the flight plan here in a minute. So we're going to go back to menu, select FMC, verify our airplane, which we have the Pratt & Whitney 4060s on board. We're going to go to the pause int button at the bottom. Shanghai is WSSS. And then we can just take this for our GPS. Then we'll go to route and we'll type it in again. WSSS. Now, Jakarta that we're going to is WIII. Light number today will go with uh, FD. X uh, five seven two. I put that in wrong. That's fine. All right. So now the first. Uh, well, what I'm going to do is put our arrival or departure in. That'll help fill this in. We're going to go off to left on the init six echo departure, as you saw in the. Um, uh, preview uh, slides and we've got them both selected we'll execute come back to flight plan and it's going to put the next fix on here and then we go on all right let me pull my cheat sheet to make this well actually we'll do this so you all can see it again Yesterday was a rough day. Oh, you know what? That's right. I have not clicked over yet. Forgot. I uh, set my flight plan up, but I didn't go any further. Let's try that again. There it is. So it's a pretty simple, easy flight plan to put in, folks. It's only like 550 miles tops. All right, so we're going to go to uh, from a Nitto. We're going to be on the Bravo 470. So we type Bravo 470 under VIA. And then we come over to Bunik, which is B U N I K. Click there. And uh, wipe your brow, folks because it was a lot of hard work involved there, we're done. That's it. That's all there is to the flight plan. <laughs> so, um, it was, like I said, it's a tough one. So, the aircraft is now fueled, but we're going to wait for the alignment to complete before going on. Um, I don't want to set the uh, uh, performance um, without... The, uh, alignment complete. We'll check here. Just give me a second to grab a sip of coffee. And we're going to press on here. Um, I 
It's just nice to see everything. Mr. Avadu, welcome aboard. Hope you're having a great day. Uh, it's a great weekend, and uh, hope you're having a good one yourself. All right, so I see really good marks here. Everything's loading in like it should. Um, so let's uh, get ready to hang on a second here. So, let's see what we can do here to get flying with uh, Captain Mike here. Let's push up oop, the wrong side. There we go. i got to figure out how that, why that does that. Okay, we're down to three minutes, and it's basically here. Now, in this aircraft, it tells you on your nav display. I've showed you on the 737 and 767.57s. The 747.57. Uh, triple seven show you in your nav display your time to alignment. Their IRS is also a little different than the other two, so that's why. All right, so we're going to continue on with the checklist. Now, we've already obviously powered up. We're on the external power, um, so we're just going to continue with the overhead panel while we wait. All right, so... Okay. Well, Get the FMC finished up here in the MCP. We'll set the hydraulics. All we're going to do is move number four to uh, auxiliary. Now, fuel pumps will stay off for the time being, although they're calling them to be on. We'll keep, well, let's, we'll, we'll stay in check. Let me not get ahead of it. Let's just check some. This is where I don't like the 7-4. Uh, because with the 767, there would have been a panel here to tell me how my fuel tanks are loaded. It's not here, but I had to go to the fuel panel. I mean, granted, it's not a hard look, but when you're single screen like this, it is kind of annoying. All right, cross feeds we don't need. Voice recorder on. We don't have the uh, box here to look at. Anti-ice will stay off until the engines, we get them running. Window heat, we have both on. That's right here, folks. Wash, uh, windshield wipers were checked earlier, but they're off as well. Yaw dampers, once we're aligned, we'll come back and get them on. Outflow valves, those are right here. They're all showing in the open. I do not think these work. I, I've been in flight, and I don't see them opening and closing, so I'm not sure they're modeled. Air conditioning. Okay, we've got the passenger. Okay, now this is not a all-out cargo, pl cargo plane, meaning nose load, side load. Um, it's a passenger converted freighter, BCF, otherwise known as a Boeing converted freighter. So... We still have the upper and lower recirks, and uh, we don't have the Casper, though. I just happened to notice. Okay. Um, aft cargo heat will stay off for the time being till we're ready to go. Um, high flow switch on. Engine equipment cooling to normal. Um, pack one is already on. Isolation valves are already open. We have uh, lead air valves open. We'll get the APU now as well. And that's where we're going to hold. Let's get back down and see where we stand. We are aligned. So we can continue on. We'll go back up, catch the uh, yaw dampers. And uh, that should take care of that. And let's get back down into here. Let's continue with the performance now. Not 100% fully readied, but it'll work for what we do. All right, we're just so I can go to it when it's time. Okay, just getting kind of ready for some things. All right, so the zero fuel weight for today. Now, 
it is time to uh, think about getting some toolkit up here. If the man behind the curtain would hit the right switch, there we go. And give me a second here to move it into a better locate. Well, we'll just go with it this way. Um, and we'll just kind of make it fill the screen. Okay, so. All right, so let's bring Sim Toolkit in. All right, so there's our route. Now we're on the uh, um, flight summary page. You can see we do have ATC available. We'll be on uh, VATSIM here shortly. Okay, so the loadout for today. Uh, that is not uh, what I have on board, so we're not going to go with this one. Stand by. Uh, did I bring the other one over? Yes, I did. We're going to switch to the other one. I just need to make sure it's going to load for us because it's been a while since I've used it. And I don't think it's active. Okay. All right, there we go. All right, so here's Professional Flight Planner. This is how we're loaded, folks. Um, we're going to go up real quick, go through this. Let's go to the summary page, because that'll help immensely in understanding this in this whopping 500-mile flight. Okay, top of the screen, obviously, is our fuel. Um, we're released with 59,000 pounds of fuel, and you can see the breakdown. Um... Wow. So, I may be changing some numbers here, because... Kilograms, are we? Nope. All right. So, I just was looking at my... Numbers here do not match my cheat sheet, I don't think. No, they do not. Gotta love that. Gotta love that. Um, anyway, uh, we'll be running with a reserve of about 13.8. Uh, um, actually, I'm going to run it at 17.8. Be safe. All right. Weights. We got four passengers and a total payload of 112,975 pounds. <clears throat> so that's our zero fuel weight right below it. Here's our limit. Our fuel we're boarding actually is 59,000. Now that's one little quirk with this program. You can't put in 59 point, well, Let's do it this way. Let's say I wanted 58.965 in. Well, you can't put 58.9 in. You got to put 59 in. <clears throat> Let's say it was 58.1. If I want it, I have to put 59 in. It won't take that decimal yet. So <clears throat> they're working. All of this is because of X-Plane and in the way the default is set up. So they're working on the data refs and all that they do, them programmers behind the screens. So it's a little quirk. We're a little heavier than normal, but we'll live through it. So 59,000 pounds of fuel. You see our takeoff weight. There's our max. Our landing weight estimated right here. And again, our estimated or our maximum landing weight. Okay, flight time hour and 14 minutes give or take um, and then this is the cost breakdown and folks no real science here I just went hmm it's this amount per hour to fly it hmm this amount of hour to delay it and so forth pulled them out of the sky folks I have no idea if I'm even close 
All right, now let's see how that breaks out into here. Okay, so where we're at on the screen here is entering most of this data. So we've got our zero fuel already on. Uh, 519.9, I believe is what it said, yes. And I know professional flight planner is still in front of you. Um, so we have our 112, 187, that's our cargo. And then our four passengers and their bag right there. Okay, this is our takeoff data. We'll update it with uh, Topcat when we're ready to put that information in. This is a little old prior to starting up the uh, stream. So maybe an hour at the most by the time we go. But it's really good information that gets on your flight plan. You can see the uh, runway information, the flaps, your what you're going to put in on your pages. We'll show that with TopCat. And your engine out procedure as well, should we lose one on takeoff after V1. Likewise, we get our estimated landing data. Again, folks, this is now, not the hour and 20, 30 minutes down the road when we get to uh, Jakarta. The fuel breakdown again, as we saw before, our estimated times, we'll see if we get this or not. And we're going to fly at 35,000. Okay. And then we start into our flight. So pretty simple cut and dry flight. Um, like I said, the center is up. Singapore is up. Jakarta's up. up. So we have ATC. All right, so let's pull sim or a uh, um, professional flight planner away. Let's go in and dig in here now. Okay, so I said 17.8 is going to be our reserve. That will allow us to get to Jakarta, get to our alternate, which is literally on the other side of town. So we're talking a real short flight, actually. I think I can give you that number right now. That is a 122-mile run. Oh, wait, I'm sorry, 82-mile run to the other side. It's, goes, it, it's got a little bit of a couple of fixes to get us there, so that's why it seems a little higher than you would think. Oh, wait, I didn't do anything. There it goes. There it goes. Sorry about that, folks. All right, we moved the map. All right, so let's continue on. So again, 17.8. The cost index was 100. We said 350. Oh, okay. Clear, clear. Uh, they're showing a CG of 20. I was writing down 21, so we're pretty close. And I'll put my 2,000 foot step climb in just to see if it's going to happen on this run. I highly doubt it. Uh, then we go to thrust limbs. Now this is where Topcat comes in. And I just want to move it off, uh, off the screen here to the other side. And at the same time... Size it just so it fits the page right. Okay, there's Topcat. Okay, um, with Topcat in place, basically you're seeing the same numbers. However, I've adjusted the fuel to match exactly what's loaded. So that way, we're good to go. Um, and there's where I got my CG from. So we're really close. So we'll go to takeoff. Now this is a takeoff and landing performance calculating tool. So it's going to give us the up-to-date information here as soon as I click update. 340 at 3 for the winds. There's our temperature. There's our Q&H. 
Now it's showing a stab trim of five. I think I pulled 5.2 from something else. I think it was the paperwork, but anyway. Um, so let's get back here to Top Cat and fill in everything. So we're on two left now. So that's a 13,123 foot runway. Folks, plenty of runway for this big dog. Heading of 2-3, 23 degrees, and it's 200 feet wide. And just if you know how to put them in, folks, there's your slope. I don't know if that's possible on the Boeing screens. Well, I know not on this one yet. But uh, if you know how to put them in. And we're 22 feet above sea level. So let's complete or compute. And let's see how close to the paperwork we got. Uh, let's see. I'm going to compare. Top, uh, let's see, 10 degrees flaps. I kind of figured that one, but we'll be T02 and 58 degrees. Okay, it's a little higher speeds. So, but over, overall, folks, it's pretty much the same. Okay, so we're going to put... We're going to go with this, and that'll leave us uh, just under 4,000 feet of runway. Like I said, big dog. Climb 2, we'll go with climb 1. And we need to put in here 58 degrees, so that's going to change. Okay. Now we go to the takeoff page. and I don't think... There is not a next page. I'm used to it with the other planes. Okay, so flaps 10. And you can tell our speeds are way off looking at it. So we'll type them in. Uh, let's go with 140. That confirms it. I know it doesn't change, folks, and I don't know... Uh, how that gets changed in there the sparks groups working on it but once you put it in if you click it again it'll tell you what's been entered V rotate 146 okay and oh look at the right side it does have the right number here but we still put it in to make sure it's right Clicking it, and our it shows a trim of 3.7 and a CG of 26. So here's what I, I'll show you how we set our trim up when we get to that point. But it's, it's a little trickier. It's the way I do it. It seems to work fine for me. All right, so that takes care of Top Cat. Okay. And let's... Bring it back up here. And let's get the MCP. That was the one other step we had to skip while we're waiting. Okay, so the heading we know from Top Cat. I'll get it from some toolkit. Oh, never mind. We won't get it from there. It looks like center may have gone down. Uh, let's get it from Top Cat, shall we? It is 23 degrees. Now, just be careful here, folks. We want to keep it on auto for the bank angle, which is the outer ring. When it moves, if it comes off auto, it'll be limited to that. Okay, 153. We'll go 163. B2 which is 153 plus 10 is what I do. And uh, now would be a good time to take a look at our departure. Okay, here's the uh, charts program I use. It is Navgraph. By the way, folks, I was remiss in saying this yesterday. Uh, Navgraph updated yesterday or the day before. So if you want to stay up to date with your fixes and Sometimes the charts, head on over, get your update program running and update all of your FMCs so they're current, as well as your charts if there is any. 
All right, so we got charts up here now. We're going to go on the Anito 6 Echo Departure. Which basically is... Uh, Oh, it's got them both on here. Okay. So we're going to basically shoot north to Topham, to Dokata, to Dagra, to Donson, to Antino. Now, initial climb is 3,000 feet. Um, with approach still being online, I believe. We'll double check here. Um, we'll, we'll go ahead and set it but we'll be ready to move it up to 35 if they aren't available. So we're set to 3,000. Uh, we need to cross Topkin or Topham at 2,000. Dakota at 4,000. Well, now, now below 6. I'm going to set it to 6,000. And I'll tell you why. Because we are going to not be above 6,000. That's weird. At or below 6,000 at Dagra. So, um, and then we'll turn right on to Antonio. Okay, so there's our departure, folks. Uh, real quick, looking at the chart, let's kind of zoom it in. The important information besides the picture is the transition altitude of 11,000 feet. Going to do is click this one into VNAV. A swing over to it. I'm gonna set one one here for our transition. Okay. Um, then, uh, looking through the rest, we just make sure the aircraft is good for it. Singapore approach will be 120.3. We'll see if that's what they're on. And airport elevation of 22 feet. Uh, we're at 108. So let's go up. That's pretty pretty close on our out. Kind of, sort of. Yeah, I guess it is. When I look at my standby gauge, yeah, we're close. These numbers are really throwing me off. Okay. Uh, again, we've gone through the routing. Um, so there's our departure, folks. All right. So let us press on with the checklist. That pretty well sets our MCP up. We'll get our flight directors on at this time. And I think we're going to end up at the EFIS. But yep, we're headed right to our EFIS page. So let me zoom in because it'll make it a little easier. Electronic flight information system is what EFIS is for these on VOR for now. So we're going to set this up. Okay, we are currently on the DH, which I want to set to 100. It's a lot easier to just scroll with your mouse wheel up to it. Then we'll set our MDA. And what I'll do is set it for 400 feet. Usually I go 400 feet above the uh, airfield elevation unless instructed otherwise all right okay we've got our map and we'll set uh, there turn traffic on weather radar shows oh go ahead and turn that off okay now we can't really do do a lot with this side. We can set the DH. Here, let me just move over. We'll set it real quick. But really, uh, there is, you know, it is what it is. Oh, let's move the uh, MDA. Okay, hang on.
Okay, we're setting the MDA over here. Scrolling up to 100. And also, I'll set them to VOR. Nothing set on the bottom. And if you want to make sure what you're set on here, since you can't really see it, unless you come up top here, um, just like I did, move it, see which one moves. It's the MDA we're on, which is what I want. All right. Pushing on, displays are set as we want. Standby instruments are set. All right, so now we're going to, oh, and the nav uh, selections. Uh, nav selector switches, that are these. I put them at 12 o'clock on all of them. To include first officer. Now we'll move into the middle here. All right, actually, or to the bottom exact okay so speed lever speed brakes are down flaps are zero and zero parking brake is set fuel control are in cutoff uh, thrust levers work we want to make sure those work now not find out oh my gosh they're not moving on the end of the runway okay our comms uh, real quick there's fat sims uh, unicom uh, that was from, oh yeah, what's going to be our uh, frequency here? Hang on. Actually, I'm still showing, no, I'm not. Uh, one, see, 124.6 was not what was on our chart. So it does make it very cumbersome sometimes to get this to work right. Put that on progress. About legs. Okay, and over here we have emergency and another Unicom. We're uh, passenger signs are set to on. Auto brakes We'll set the reject after start. Uh, we are 2,000 right now until we get a uh, clearance from Clarence. And then uh, we're ready to fire up the APU. Okay, so for the APU, we've got our fuel tanks on. Let's uh, move the start switch. Come down to the middle. I'm going to go to the status page. That way we can actually watch it spooling up. Okay. And actually, let's go outside. You can see the heat plume. Now, some people are curious, where is the inlet? Right here, folks. That's your inlet for the APU on a 747. So, all right, and let's uh, just keep watching. We're only 56% of the way there. Once it's uh, up and running, we'll be uh, uh, ready to go here. Um, just want to, okay. Oh, we actually have tower too. 118.6. Well, let's give it a try. What the heck? Oh, we, we'll be back on it here in a second. I like trying the ADA. Oh, I'm not even online, so it isn't going to work. All right. Okay, well, what we're going to do is come online. 
may have to, uh, oh, yeah, we'll, let's do it for safety. Hang on a second here. Just going to refile. Yeah, it's still set for the old. Hang on a second. Let me get my new flight plan entered. Of course, they'll probably switch it. Okay, and anything else need to be put in time-wise? We are looking at just about an on-time departure, folks, looking at this. Actually thought we were running behind. Just need to connect. All right, so we are now online. Give me a second here. I need to fire up a program. And while that's firing up, give me one second. All right, folks, sorry about that. And we just got to get our flight going here. Schedules found and go here to The hardest part is finding the aircraft I'm using. All right, so are you FedEx? Five and start. I put it in. Oh, I did. Holy, holy back roll. I think I put this in wrong. Better I selected the wrong one, huh? Try this again. All right, I do apologize for this delay, folks. Um, all right. Uh, we'll try it one more time once it gets loaded up. Oh, I see what I did wrong. Okay. Just waiting for him to populate. I, I did select the wrong one. All right, now let's get back down to the 400s.
There we go. Much better looking here. Oh, and that came up better. All right, so we're going to get credit for the flight now. All right, folks, so we're ready to pretty much push this thing back. Uh, Jado bottles, uh, you know, we'll, we'll be fine. We don't need to Concord this one, uh, J Drums. But if you're wanting to, feel free to. Uh, let's see. Check my ATIS. 128.6. So we'll come down here, we'll put that in first. 28. See if it works, I doubt it. And it's not working. Okay. And we'll go to tower 18. Oh, good. They're staying on 600. I don't. Okay. All right. So we got the frequency set. Uh, break. Okay. So back up top here. APU's running. APU on. Just want to make sure my door closed. It's not closed. There it goes. All right. I'm sorry for all the bouncing around here. So APU is on the gen. We've got the APU set. Performance data reset. Uh, actually, we do need to go through that so I can get my sound set correctly. So, V1 will be 140. V rotate will be 146. And a V2 will be 153, folks. Just double check because I fat fingered something. Okay, that looks good. Save. All right. Uh, stape trim. All right. Now I told you we're going to look at this in a little different light. Okay, currently, wow. We're going to get it into the green. Um, I want it set to five. So we'll set it right about there. We're going to be trimming up, folks, I can already tell you, on takeoff. Uh, aileron trim, rudder trims are set. We'll go to auto start to make it an easy start. And uh, recall crew briefing complete. We're ready to push. While we wait for our clearance from Clarence, let's go to better pushback. Start our push. Down to cockpit. Please show me where you want to go. How about I do this right? Ground to cockpit. Please show me where you want to go. All right, so we're going to come out. We'll go like that. And uh, click enter. Ground to cockpit. Tow is driving up. All right, and that takes care of getting us ready to push and start. All right, folks, here we go. Really wish I knew what the uh, num letter was, but we'll just go with what he says. Singapore Tower. Uh, Act 572, cargo west ramp request uh, IFR clearance to Jakarta. Calling Singapore Tower. Confirm your call sign is uh, Mike Alpha Charlie, or are you flying for Arabia, Morocco? Mike Alpha Charlie, Mac Air 572. Okay. All doors and hatches are closed. Ready to connect. 
Okay, Mac Air 572 cleared uh, Anito 6 Echo Departure, flight level uh, 350, Squawk 0134, and we do have India. Mac Air 572, Roger, we back, correct? connected and bypass pin inserted. Really sparking break. Okay, go on. All right. And Singapore Tower Mac Air 572, we're ready to push back. Mac Air 0572, push back, we face south. Roger, pushing back, uh, we'll face south. Mac Air 572 Heavy. All right, so that's what we're going to do, folks. Let's get up to the top here. Okay, so she's ready to go. All I got to do is kick off the parking brake. I uh, kicked off the parking brake. Oh, we're going to have fun here. Oh, I know why. That's my bad. Hang on. Let's uh, get back down to this one. Go to menu. Ground handling. Starting pushback. And <laughs> you may start engine. All right. That was on me. <laughs> Forgot to put the chalks out. All right, so we're pushing back. Go ahead and start the engines. To do that, we'll start inboards first. Oops. Just pull the switches out. Now, they don't start until you lift or move the uh, engine controls down here, fuel controls. I also want to go ahead and get on engine. That way we can monitor. There they go. You can see them beginning to spool and you can see them lit up here on the top. All right, folks, we are in the middle of pushback and we are lit off and spooling up. The big thing to watch when you're lit off is the EGT right here. Everything else also will be coming up, but that's your one that tells you you've got gas turbine temperature. Okay, and I just heard the switches come off. Let you all see a little bit outside. And we're going to go ahead and arm up the inbound, the in, or the outboards. And yes, you can in real life start both engines. Or two engines at a time. Now, he cleared me to 35,000, but we'll wait and see what approach does. Hello, Ben Cochran. How are you? Welcome aboard. Okay. And we're finishing the pushback. Operation complete. Go ahead and set the parking brake. Don't have that. Disconnecting tail. Stand by. Okay, parking brake set. Engine stable. 
Oh wait, no they're not. We need number one and four started. Okay. Just a little bit longer and we'll release her. As you can tell, at 20 is when the fuel comes in. Okay, at this point it was 23, but anyway, we're good. I don't see any other aircraft that he was mentioning. And while we're waiting here, Mr. Cochran, I hope you're having a great uh, day, great Saturday. Um, and uh, hope you enjoy the ride to Jakarta. Okay, so we got our engines going. Let's have that disconnect. And while she's doing her disconnect, let's get our pumps on. Okay. She is going to disconnect. Snow is disconnected and bypass bin has been removed. Hand signal on the left. We'll see you next time. They worry time. me and sometimes, folks. They worry me. I'll be right back, folks. Okay, sorry for that. Uh, uh. All righty. So we're pushed back. All we got to do is uh, get up here to the top panel. Let's start in on this after start, and then we'll call for taxi. Okay, we'll go to continuous on the engines. APU can be turned off. Packs all to norm. Hydraulic demands all set to auto, and they are. Anti-ice, we're going to run with the engines because there are storms in the area. And uh, we just need to do a, a recall. Okay, no warnings. And we'll do a quick flight control check. Uh, just basically, I go to the status page right here in the middle. And there you got it, folks. There's your flight control. So we'll just go left. And I'm making sure when I hit the center button that it centers. Do the rudder. And then I just kind of do a freedom move. Make sure everything moves. Okay, and let's get back on the engine page. All right. Oh, my wife was already outside. My daughter just showed up. They're getting ready to go shopping. And my dog is going to bark. All right, so we're ready to taxi, folks. Singapore Tower, uh, Mac Air 572 is pushed back, ready to taxi to left. Mac Air 0572, taxi Victor 4, Whiskey, Link Point, Whiskey Niner, runway 0 to left. Victor 4, Whiskey, Whiskey Niner, Singapore, or Mac Air 572.
Okay, folks, let's get to taxiing. Parking brake is going off. Uh, taxi light switches to on. And I lost my place. EFIS is set. And we'll keep the auto throttle off. While we're here, let's set the auto brake to reject so we don't forget. We'll get the uh, transponder fully spun up. Here we go. And we've got somebody following here. Oh, the Big Marcus subscribed three months in a row. Thank you, Mr. Big Marcus. By the way, welcome aboard. Hope you're having a great Saturday. Come on, plane. How much do we gonna have to give you? Alright, so he gave us a specific Victor 4, so let me get an idea what that looks like. Oh, okay, so I'm going to come out turn here. Then it's down whiskey. Oh yeah, this is the one that has trouble taxing, okay. Okay. All right, we're going to have to get in there and figure out why, uh, but let's make the turn here, Victor 4. Out to Whiskey. And then the 13,000 foot rough taxi down to the end. The only bad thing and sucky thing about this airport is I don't really have a lot of yellow lines. So I just pretty much put her in the center and hope for the best. Let's get this up and this up so I can make sure I am doing it correctly. Whiskey 9 is all the way at the end, folks. Big thing here is kind of watch your ground speed. You don't want to get really over 20 to 25. I'm up at 30. So we're just going to kind of ease her on down. While I'm in my taxi, this is a good time. Oh, great. Uh, okay, so it's all the same frequency. I was like, great, I'm going to have a dual frequencies to figure out here. 124, 600, okay. All right, so here we go, taxiing down. Okay, folks, into the runway is in sight. Awesome. Always love hearing that.
Okay, so there's the end. I'm just going to do a quick switch on my departure charts. Okay. All right, folks, before takeoff checks now, uh, MCP is set. I say that, and we're slowing here to 13 o'clock. We'll be set here momentarily. Transponders are on TARA. Recall. Flight attendants, well, they're going to make sure the cargo in the back has their seatbelts on. Again, you can see the inlet there right by the rudders. Okay, we're coming up to Whiskey 9. I don't know why I don't see yellow lines here. I just never understood that at this place. Mac Air 572, surface wind line and durable runway 0 to left, left takeoff via Whiskey 9 Mac Air 572 understands clear, takeoff to left, uh, Mac Air 572. Got myself confused in everything I said. Let's see here. Oh, I was going to say Whiskey 9 -er. Now, just remember, you're in a heavy now, folks. Those of you used to uh, Cessnas and Boeings, the baby Boeings, as I call them, the 737, you got to go past it a little bit to be able to get on the center line. And it needs some time, some power. Although, usually, these engines should be powerful enough. Okay, we're getting ready to enter the runway, so strobes. Okay, and once we're in place, we'll get our clock set and we'll be ready to roll. Okay, let's get back into cockpit here. Again, we're going to pass it up, come around. Okay, get on the runway here. Okay, the lights. Set here. Clock on. All right, let's punch Toga.
Okay, we're airborne, folks. Gear up. Okay, 0572, contact Singapore, approach 124, decimal 6, okay. 124 decimal six, Mac Air 572. Thanks for Europe. the ATC. Have a great day. Or night, in his case. And... Singapore Tower, good evening. Just start 3671 on final, runway 02 to left. Uh, permission to land. Just start 3671, Singapore Tower, good morning. Surface wind light and travel, runway 02 to left, clear to land. Singapore approach uh, departure actually. Uh, Mac Air 572 on the go out of Singapore through 2500. Mac Air 0572, Singapore approach identified, plan to flight level 240. Up to 240 for Mac Air 572. Stay 9 final registry. Stay 9 line, stay 9 line, stay 9 line, stay 9 line, Flaps to five. Flaps off. Brakes off. And going up. All right. Climb one established. Okay, folks, we're in the climb right now. Okay, zero five seven two. Proceed direct, Anito. Understood. Proceeding direct, Anito. Back air five seventy two heavy. It's gonna make it hard. Well, let's see if we can do it the easy way. Hang on. The way we're supposed to, so we'll go to legs. Eight, nine, oh, because, uh, oh, we, oh, we are going to have to. Okay, fortunately with this plane, to go direct like that, we need to go to here and go to direct. Anito, boom, execute, and it'll put us on the direct. And you can see us turning now. Flaps up. Okay, we're continuing our climb to 24,000, which I think is when we leave. And we'll square up. I'm going to go ahead and scoot us out one notch. Let's get the weather radar on. Actually, I'm going to get to right. Uh, five, one, eight, oh, I can't. Eight, Not on this. Okay, landing gear flaps. Transition will be 11. Transition is not 11. Second. 11,000. I was thinking the next place we're going. Okay. So we're direct to Nito. And uh, let's get our heading set up here. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and start accelerating. We're still to 24. All right. Good old... Singapore, 10,000. Okay, so we should be accelerating up now. It looks like we might not be, so take her up to 300. 10 knots. One more. There we go. 
And folks, how I override that, it, the uh, some of the Boeings, all you got to do is click on this. You can also initiate your top descent by clicking this or a step climb. Uh, we'll look to see if we have a step climb coming here shortly. Flaps are up. We're set. On we go. Transition. Be delayed slightly as we accelerate. We're on our way, folks. Uh, feel free, if you'd like, to start putting in uh, your uh, predictions for the landing, or you can sit back and wait. We'll see how that all transpires, obviously, but for now, folks, we're uh, climbing up to cruise. Slowly. we got to hold off at 24, which I think is where the controller is going to let us go. Then a lot of rain around Jakarta as well, so we'll may have to shoot a uh, auto land. We'll see. Nice look at this bird as we're climbing. Oh, we need to get the landing lights off. Hot mic. Hot mic. Got a bird in Hot mic. All right. I think I was hitting the control button. I've got to watch doing that, folks. All right, so let's see if we can squeeze out a little bit more speed. Okay, we're on our way, now that the lights are off. Jet star 518, after Sana, turn right heading 270. After Sana 270, just a five minutes. Let y'all get a good look of the Queen of the Skies. 747 400. Alright, folks, we've got an hour and 15 or so minutes to go. Um, just waiting to break away from approach. That's a shot at 270, confirm. That's a positive. It's a 518, evil. All right, let's see how we're doing in the cockpit here. All right, here we go, folks. Heading on up. I gotta set more of a. Th well, we're still slow. Eighteen thousand feet.
Okay, and we have uh, washed out into climb now. Let's see how we're doing here on this climb itself. Oop, there we go, doing something weird. Hang on. Okay, there we go. Just keeping an eye on that speed and working the trim to keep it matched. Every now and then it doesn't want to play nice. We'll hold to 300, that's fine. Back area 0572, you're leaving by FD, point to the call, one, two, two, that's what it is. Mac Air 572 copies, thanks for the ATC, have a great day, over to you, Nicole. You have a great day. Hello. Uh, 518, uh, this is confirmed, it's heading to 3000 feet. All right, folks, and that takes us off that. We'll come off our, see how we're doing here. And I'll tell you, I always like doing this, going back to it, see where it sets us at. Eh, 300 is not bad, so it's going to climb, and then it'll settle. So we'll let it do the uh, VNAV. 300 is fine for this plane. All right, so we're climbing at a good climb rate. Uh, we've uh, passed transition, lights are off. All we can do now, folks, Okay, we're just uh, getting some things set up here to have a little bit of fun. Well, let's see here. Flying a plane is no different than riding a bicycle. It's a lot harder to put baseball cards in the spokes. Okay, we're through 27,000. Let's go ahead. We're in box, so we're going to push up a little. Just kind of ease our way into 35,000. So, folks, sit back, relax. On the about screen, you'll see where those sounds are that you can play with. Also, your channel points can be used by clicking the coffee mug on the uh, chat area there. But uh, we're trying to get things more interactive for y'all so y'all can have a great time in flight, especially when we start cranking up some of the long distance ones. So, with that in mind, Right, 
Let's see how that looks transitioning through this. Actually, I want to get a couple of perspectives here. Okay. All right, no weather showing, so that's what I was wondering. Coming up on Anito in 30 miles. Then we're on our way to PKB. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, that is on the way, I think, to Anito. Oh, Anito will be about our top of climb. Let's see how that looks. Since we're now above the muck. The muckety muck. Yeah, I can only imagine, folks, there's a lot of storms in the area. When you look at Sim Toolkit, you look at Volanta, you see them. So I'm thinking the way X-Plane 11 draws the weather, I don't think uh, is a real good indicativeness to it. But uh, we'll see how 12 comes in since... Uh, they're touting volumetric clouds. I'm not sure what that's going to look like. But we'll all see when 12 comes out. And 50 minutes out. All right, so what I'm going to do is want to set up my arrival at this point. Uh, actually, this... 8-4. Just checking to see. I'm pretty sure that's what it's going to want to mock out at. Yeah, 8-4. Okay. All right. So there you go, folks. Coming up on top of climb here very shortly. Um, we're hitting our cruise at 8-4. We're in climb still now. What does washout mean? I used that term earlier. Um, basically, when you're climbing, we'll set either climb two, climb one, climb. Now, what those individually do is pull the power back from 100% back into the 90s, if you will, percent power, basically easing the wear and tear on it, you know, ever so slightly. You know, folks, these are multi-million dollar engines per engine on this plane. So they're wanting to get as much life out of them as they can uh, before the major overhauls occur. So by pulling it back to climb two, let's just say, that allows us to still run at the same speed because the aircraft is controlled by vertical speed and wanting to maintain whatever speed that is. So it'll do it by vertical speed, not by the throttles necessarily, even though they show that on the sims. It's primarily the up and down of the nose to get the speed they want. When it reaches a point where that N1, N2 value equals what climb 1 is, we'll say, when you're in climb 2, then it washes into climb 1. You, the passenger, don't even feel it. Same power same speed we're still going and then the same happens again by 20,000 feet most of the time you're in climb it washes into climb and then again it's just a solid climb you the passenger don't feel hardly anything in the back other than maybe a slight change in the nose as it tries to maintain that power setting and speed and realize the speed is adjusting too. 
take uh, when we uh, started our climb, we set around 310 at 10,000 feet. Well, we're just now hitting 80, uh, 30, uh, 35,000, and look, we're at 280. So see the speeds, you know, come down as well. But we're still moving over the ground at over 475 mile an hour. So you get a kind of it's a weird tug, you know, tug of war up here, but. That's the whole goal is to save the engines a little bit as any savings folk on a multi-million dollar engine is worth the money. So let's get into, get out of what I'm not very familiar at and do the best I can and let's get into what I am. Let's get this thing planned out. So our arrival as our route showed and in case it hasn't showed here in a while, we're going to be on the Booney 2H approach. All right, so what we'll do is we'll come to the FMC, click Departure Arrival. Click the Arrival by WIII, Jakarta. Now we're planning runway 25 right so if we select ILS 25 right now there is a transition for the ILS transitions over here are for the approach we're looking for the boonie 2h approach so we'll click select oh clear I did it backwards sorry uh, this won't in normal times, folks, you can click this and it'll only show what you want. So let's uh, go back to departure. Click here. Click here. Okay. And then we'll click here. Now, I need to pull up something here. All right. So you're going to here first. And we're going to go ahead and select execute. I'll grab the uh, transition if we need it. So let me pull the charts page up. Okay, there is our arrival. Now as we look at this arrival, folks, we're going to be coming in to Bidik, down to Booney, Boonik, Buvax, Rambu, Oh, private. Yeah, we do need that. Okay, so we need to go through. Select them all again. I hate when it does this. Cancel. Go there. Go. Do this again. Let's see if it did it right. Hang on a second. Boonick. Ramble. Well, there we go. Okay, so it looks like it's in here correctly. Lovex, Rambo, Pry, 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 okay. And then we're on the arrival for the star. Okay, uh, for the uh, approach. So again, Boonik, Ramal. So Boonik, we need to be, let's go back to the page before. 22,000. So we got to start figuring this up real quick. Ramal below seven or above 17, below 12,000 by Lovix. So we got to set it up for Lovix at 12,000 or lower. And uh, got some speed restrictions uh, 240, that's fine. And uh, 3,000 by Pry OK. And that's a 190. 7,000 by Rambo. So those we have to factor in when we actually descend. 35 minus 7 times 3 is about 84 miles. We'll go with 100. That way we're safe. Okay, so there's your up, uh, departure. Now, Real quick, across the top here, there's our ATIS for Jakarta. It's 34 feet above sea level, 13,000 on the transition. Now, to set the transition, you can't do that in the Sparksbird. That's, a again, X-Plane is uh, the FMC itself won't. 
But say you're in the other 747-800, or you're in the 737, or the 767. Those will have a decent page, or the 800 won't. But the 737, the 760, and the 757s, they'll have a a climb, cruise, decent. Click your decent. 747-800 payware that's out there for X-Plane, and any of your normal 747-400s in Microsoft, if you're over in, as uh, one streamer likes to call it, must fuss. Go to your VNAV page, click Next. Till you get to Descent, click Forecast. This is what we get in x Put in your altitude there. It's uh, three digits. If you're under 10,000, zero altitude, or zero, whatever number, zero. Okay, real simple stuff. We got to go back to the climb page because we're going to put in one, three, and I don't think it's modeled, so it's not going to highlight for us when we cross it. Okay. Now, uh, we need RNAV or GNS, which is uh, GPS. Uh, RNAV 1. And so forth. All right, then our directions are right here. If you lose comms, go to 7600. Uh, follow the star. If under radar, follow vectors, blah, you know, standard stuff. Okay, here's the Bunik 2H arrival. So we're going to go Bunik to Rommel to Lovix, and then Lovix, Rombo to Try OK. Now, once we're there, I've got a setup for the ILS. So we're going to go Pry OK to ARK. It's on the next page. ARC AP. And then we're going to join the localizer. Pretty simple. But again, let's go through it so people get familiar with the JEP chart. Because that's all you're going to pretty much find overseas, folks, is if you don't have Navgraph, it's hard to find charts. Okay, so across the top are what the frequencies are expected so you can be ready in the cockpit. Whether VATSIM controllers follow it, that you got to go and look at your X-Pilot, V-Pilot to get that. For us, approach will be 123.8. Five. And again, I don't see it up here. So, we'll go ahead real quick while we're here. No, we can't. Just do it this way. So, it's going to be uh, 120, hang on a second, 123.85. Okay, so we're set up as we descend. Okay, we're in TARA, everything's good. And continuing with this. So you can see, not even arrival is even close. Approach, nothing is lining up. So we go the best we can. Okay, however, this next bar is probably more important than the top one in X-Plane. Um, our localizer shows right here as well as 110 decimal 9. That will automatically set in here, but we can check. 247 will be the heading or course inbound. When we come off our cap, that's what we should be on localizer adding in. ILS DA, decision altitude. Okay, MDA is 290. Decision altitude will translate out to 269 feet above the ground. 
in our airport and runway, so we got an upslope slightly. The sucky thing about landing on 25 right here, a little bit of a lengthy taxi to cargo. That's fine, we'll work it. Now, um, again, 190, 3,000 feet. So we got to make sure we make that and then we'll track inbound. Come in. Here's our missed approach. So it's going to be, looks like a, a right hand turn, recticum, 3,000 feet, to Lovix at 6,000, or if ATC says differently. Now this one gives you an idea of how far you're traveling and the altitudes you need to be at. So at five miles out, 1,664 feet. Okay, next is our vertical. So mandatory 2,000 at ARCIP. We'll track that over to our Meeting with the glide slope at 6.1 DME, follow that in. To maintain a three degree uh, glide slope, we're probably gonna be in the ballpark of 150. So we're gonna maintain about an 800 foot a minute ground, uh, descent if we're not able to grab approach. We're looking for high ALS lighting. That's what this chart's for with Pappies on the left see if that comes right. Here's our missed approach. Here. And then ILS 290 is our decision altitude. All aircraft visibility 800 meters or more. And that's pretty much the arrival folks. We've already plugged it in. All I want to do is go here. So let's get charts out of the way. Gonna bring Top Cat back in for our speeds. Oops, I clicked the wrong one. one, one, one. Okay, so we go to landing. Again, this is our takeoff and landing performance. This is a piece of payware, folks. You do get about 30 days free with it, but then you have to pay for it. We'll click update. 190. Wouldn't you know, everything's friggin' changed again. <sighs> Let's see how that translates out from my runway. Well, we actually get a headwind, so although, albeit a one-knot headwind, we get one. Uh... Okay, everything's the same. I'm going to set us for an auto land only because it helps us with getting braking modes and all of that. We'll hopefully not have to shoot it. So we'll hit compute. All right, so we're looking at an approach speed of about 150 knots. It's actually 148 landing speed, 143. Click approach. And what I'm going to do 30, oops, 30, okay, so I'm going to have to put it in myself, so 30, slash uh, 143, was not expecting that folks, boom. All right, and that sets our approach up. So that'll leave us, uh, let's see, we're gonna need 7,800 feet of runway, almost 79, leaving us about 4,000 feet. So we got a nice 12,000 foot runway to land on. There you go, folks, the arrival brief complete. Oops, one, one too high, there we go. Coming over BKP. And and again, welcome to the stream. Hope you're having a great day, XYFM. Hope you are as well. 
folks, uh, we're literally, you know what, I'm going to help you all out here. There we go, we're 31 minutes out. Okay, so folks, you want to put a prediction in there? It's the exclamation mark predict space minus sign and then whatever number you want to put. But there we go, folks. We are on our way. Currently, the weather in Jakarta is as follows. Oh, he says that cautiously. Uh, we got a few clouds at 2,100 feet, eight or 7,000 meter visibility, and uh, so see how that all translates. It's showing as marginal, um, so about a half mile to a mile visibility. Okay, coming over PKB, so we're about to make the turn. Headed south. set up for 35,000 so 85 miles out let's kind of piece this together um, trying to figure out where I want to actually start my descent because I got to make 7,000 by ramp over. Okay, so that's 14, 19, let's call it uh, 15, 20. Okay, so we'll need to be 30 a mile or so from Boonick. Okay, so it looks like what's published on the flight plan should work out. Um, Oh, sorry about that one, folks. Now, let me make one uh, caveat here that I didn't from the beginning. Um, I set the aircraft 12 hours earlier than real time. Um, until I get fully reacclimated back to the 747, um, I don't want to be shooting a lot of night approaches, especially um, with this new this way. This bird can be really cagey sometimes, so I like to be able to see. Plus, I can't get good screenshots either, but that's not a good excuse. But uh, this was a, a livery uh, FedEx Express Virtual. Uh, their, one of their founders uh, did this paint job. Atlas Air, you can see on the back. FedEx, folks, does not have 747s. However, especially this time of the year, as we're going into Christmas, they contract Atlas to fly uh, so they can keep on schedule. Because, well, quite frankly, they can load quite a, quite a bit into that bird. 
so it helps them out immensely. So does UPS. So don't think they're being preferential. He, the big carriers in the U.S., Kalita, um, Atlas, Polar, by the way, folks, before you say, well, what about Polar? They're part of Atlas. Um, all contract to help out to help. They're contracted away. National Air Carriers or National Air will come in and help. Um, so there's a lot of stuff moving now, folks, especially when you got cargo ships waiting to get into Los Angeles. When they get in, it's going to be a scramble. So they contract with these big carriers to get these heavies to help them out. And in their operation, it does not matter if it's not a nose loader or not. They can load these through the side pretty quickly. I mean, they it. I mean, the nose only helps just a little. So, and believe me, folks, they can hold quite a bit inside these things. Especially if they fly, say, Memphis to one of their regional hubs. I mean, my goodness, they can pretty much gross the plane out if they had to. And they could still fly it. So, now their 7.6s, 7.5s, and 777s, they can do the workload too. They just need extra, extra lifting power sometimes, and that's where these come in. Atlas and Polar also work heavy with Amazon um, or with their 767s, but um, pulling the freight out of Cincinnati because that's the big hub for Amazon here. And uh, <clears throat> they also connect with uh, East Midlands with the uh, DHL group there in East Midlands. They also connect with uh, La Paz, I believe it's called, or La Peg, however that's pronounced in Germany. So they're moving quite a bit of stuff coast to coast and worldwide. So it's just an interesting thing. You only see Atlas on one side, and on the other side, you get the FedEx emblem. So it's, it's kind of neat how he did it. So... All right, with 23 minutes to go, let's get inside here, see where we are in relation. I think I've got this one set up. 88 miles from top descent, so let me get up to the main panel here. I'm gonna switch it into progress for now. So we're at 87. Okay, let's get some checklists running, shall we? Okay, for the descent, we'll turn the passenger signs on. They're getting really unruly back there, folks, those baggage, those packages, so we better just get them to strap in. <clears throat> Pressurization's checked. Real simple in this one. Check it right here. Looks like cabins at 7,500 feet, landing 2,000 feet. That is wrong. And uh, six point, okay. So yeah, some of this isn't necessarily right. <laughs> Let me uh, come into the middle here. Let me see what it looks like on the CS page. That would be why none of the information filled in. Fuel, looking good. Okay out that one. Never gotten a PDC like that before. Wow, I wish a lot of people would do that. Thank you, sir. Uh, let's see, when reaching 24.5, okay. Keep all of that in mind. 
as we continue in. Bloodluster, welcome to the stream. Hope you're having a great Saturday. And a better tomorrow. Okay, now Top of Descent just showed up here on the uh, nav display. Auto brakes, we'll go ahead and get those uh, set for three, actually two. Take a look at the airfield one more time. Killer, killing me, Smalls. <laughs> All right, so we'll just uh, we'll plan to get over there as best we can. Okay, and lastly on our checklist, we have the approach briefing completed. As we pass 13,000, actually we'll go ahead and set them at top of descent to continuous. And then our minimums will set to DH just to make sure we are. Okay. And uh, we're good to go. Actually, we still have them on continuous, so it doesn't matter. Actually, we'll be uh, up there. Yeah, we'll just leave. We're going to start down here in about 50 miles, so. Again, we need to make, for the arrival, uh, Lovick's, we need to be below 12,000 feet. The rest of them, I'm not too worried, unless we start really rocketing down. Again, this plane is notorious for really crazy stuff. So, we'll be on our guard for them. Oh, and it's so nice, folks, to finally have all of my uh, timers and all working again with Streamlabs and Stream Elements. Yesterday was a fun stream. With all of that, I, what I had done in the last couple of days, I've switched the name of the stream, which fell under MJ Schmidt, and that was with one T, uh, to Flying with Mike, basically to help people find it easier. And, oh, did it change everything. So it took me a little bit to go through, and I think I found everything. I'm sure I'm going to run across something that ain't working right. But... At least we're back on track. So. And we got a little bit of an early jump today, so uh, hopefully everything will come together as we hoped for here. Yeah. at 40 out. I'm going to go ahead and set 7,000. My goal is not to fly at 7,000 all the way in. And that 7,000 is the altitude at Rambo. 
From Rambu, we'll continue descent to Pat Pry, okay, to 3,000. Um, Lovick um, and below, we need to be 240 prior at 190. The Sketchy Leo, welcome aboard and thanks for the subscription. Hope you have a great Saturday. And I hope everything's going well. Well, not yet at the airport, but here soon. Four months in a row. Outstanding. Thank you, sir. Love it, love it. Buying a plane is no different than riding a bicycle. Just a lot harder to put baseball cards in the spokes. Okay, so we're 20 miles out now. How far from 47? I'm going to go ahead and initiate our descent. It should start right here. Okay. That's a good speed, 80. Okay, so we use it. Now the other key thing here is we need to maintain at Bunik uh, 270 knots. So we'll take over to make sure we get that for sure. Actually, we're fine right now. Okay, we're starting our descent. Set my throttles here. Even though I shouldn't have to, for some reason I do with a lot of planes. Nice, he's controlling in Memphis today, huh? Well, I'm just right around the corner by about 7,000 miles. We got a controller to get a hold of here at 24,500 ish. If I remember, I'm sure he'll make me remember. <laughs> get myself on the right one here in case. There we go. If he's even still up, it's getting kind of late over here in the Far East. Oh, he's still up. All right. Okay, and again, uh, let's uh, get under the speed here. Let's dial it back. Set for 290, and I'm going to use the speed brakes here. Time getting slowed up. Okay, we're off top of descent. And we'll pull the speed brakes up again. Alright. Then we'll slow to 270, like I said, at Bunik. Run that to level where we'll be at 240. Slower. Nice little shot behind the plane. Kind of walk. 
watch this descent angle in its uh, at or above flight level 222 at uh, Jerry, you're the mic. Oh, no, no, you think you got it in that, Jerry? I want you to say it with you with me, brother. Hey, I got Bob Sugar on the other line. I'm gonna hear you say it. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Show you the money. Not, not show you. Show me the money. Show me the money. Yes. Louder. Show me the money. That's it, brother. But you got to yell that shit. Show me the money. I need to feel you, Jerry. Show me the money. Jerry, you better yell. Show me the money. Okay, so we're definitely going to be above 22,000 at Bunik. All right, folks, if you want to throw a prediction in there, it's the uh, exclamation mark, predict, space, minus, and the number. Got a couple in already. Let's see if we can get a few more of you to join in. It's just for fun. Um, so, yeah, let's, uh, here we go. We're on the arrival. We are through 24-5, so let's get a hold of our control. 24, 23, 850. 50. Jakarta approach, uh, back here 572 heavy. We're through flight level 230, descending on the uh, and then 2H arrival for uh, runway 25 right. Mac has 0572 Hello, score 6206. 6206 for Mac Air 572 Heavy. Okay. Not a big fan of this style transponder, but we don't get to say much. Okay, zero five seven two right out at five. Okay, to your destination, where you're booting to Hotel Arrival, as well as our two five right. You said on two thousand feet, finish one zero zero seven. Understand, cleared for the arrival down to 2000 for Mac Air 572 Heavy. Well, we're going to ease up a bit. <laughs> going to follow this sucker down. Okay, we need to be at 270. Now let's kick some speed brakes out again. Uh, 
I'm bringing a big poster, Merlin. You're gonna do what? This is it, Maverick! I'm gonna hit the brakes, he'll fly right by. Shit, he's gonna get a walk on us! Now! Okay, let's get dialed in. Okay, so Ramal was supposed to be 17, a little low, so 12,000 or below we should be able to make and we'll hold at 7,000. Then three, he cleared us to two. Keep our descent up. Make sure the brakes are down. Okay, we're gonna slow to two forty. At it, folks, real quick. One ninety and three or two seven thousand twenty one. Okay, still the same weather. Okay, so coming up on minimum, so we'll set and we're at ten oh eight. All right, now this is when we can check to see how we're looking on our arrival. Go to Navrad. Okay, it's still not showing up in here. All right, so again, we're set to approach. Cool. Need to get below 12,000 for Okay, there we go. 12,000 will be at our mark, heading for seven, and then three. And we'll start our flaps in after pry okay. Because that's a 190 speed, folks. We'll be at least 10 degrees at that point. Perfect. Make sure we don't have a speed. Okay, we got a good descent right folks. Again, the uh, exclamation mark, the word predict, the minus key, and then the numbers that you want to put in for your prediction into Jakarta. 
Doesn't look like a bad ride in, but you never know. Okay, we'll get the lights on now. All right, lights are on. Holding it too far. Okay, and minimums are now set. There's our cloud layers starting to show up. Let's see here, let me do a quick look at Volanta. Well, we could run into some weather, so we'll see. Currently not showing any. <coughs> see how Sim Toolkit's showing it up. Uh, we got some offshore stuff here. All right, so 7,000 at Rye OK appears to be made. Let's switch into the middle here, folks. Heading down, and we're going to go ahead and slow in the process up to about 210. Some speed brake to help us. One ten nine two forty seven. Perfect, and there it is right there. By the way, folks, let me uh, show that to you. <clears throat> when you hit Navrad, this is what you want to see. So we got the right ILS. <clears throat> okay, there's two ten. Let's go ahead and get two notches of flaps in. Okay, 0572, GLS from a 25 right request, that uh, Mac Air 572, uh, 25 right, uh, cleared for the approach. Was that what we just heard? Okay, 572, yep, clear for ILS from a 25 right request, that Oh, copy it. We'll report established, uh, Mac Air 572.
Okay, we'll get it slowed up to 190 now. You're not going to make 3,000. Put out 10 degrees flap, coming down to 2,000. Okay, localizer. Okay, let's get up here where we can see. So far, so good on a visual. Okay, let's uh, make sure we got our approach checklist run. Uh, flaps coming down, gears down, so we'll go to flaps 20. Uh, speed brakes, kind of pull up here a little bit. Basically what you do is pull it up and back till you see the word speed brakes armed. And go flaps 25. Let's go into approach mode. Until I can figure out where this runway is, although I think I see it. it. Might be right there. And lights are on. Okay. Checklist run. Folks, we are about to turn final. Okay, approach speed was one, four, eight, if memory serves. 2500. Let's find out real quick. I'll put this on. Uh, 43. Top cat said 150. Okay, we're just waiting on the glide slope now. Whoa, the soup came in. We must have got below the haze layer. Okay. Localizer established. It looks like we're just about. And uh, Jakarta approach, uh, Mac Air 572 established. Yeah, 572 wins 100 at 3 knots, Kadesh 107 right, 25 right, Kadesh 107 right, Kadesh 30. Not cool. Uh, 
Well, lucky for me, I've got the runway in sight. And we're cleared to land, so lined up. No idea what this plane was doing. One thousand. Flight slow. Flight slow. Flight slow. Flight slow. Flight slow. Slow, so we'll punch in a little bit. A little low, or a little high, a little slow. All right. And we got a wind that seems to be a little different. Four hundred. Laps thirty. Gear down. Green. Three hundred. Long landing will not hurt us here. Two hundred. Approaching minimums. One hundred. Flight slow. Fifty. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Chart. Twenty. Ten. Ten. Float. 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 Or are we on the ground? Speed race up. Well, now we are. Left at November 7. I have no idea if that's where I'm at, folks. It is where I'm at. Okay, 572, 6 number. Uh, Mac here, 572, would like to head over to the cargo area. Okay, Mac Air 572 copies. Uh, we'll make a right on uh, November Papa 1, right on to Whiskey Charlie 1, right on to Sierra Papa 1, right on, or left on to Sierra Charlie 4 over to the cargo ramp. And I think I got some of the rights and lefts wrong. <laughs> yes, so for now you're going to be thinking right, then the first one to the left, then another left, then another left. Back here, 572. We've got the chart pulled up. Thanks. <laughs> Roger, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah. We kind of figured we'd need that. <laughs> Holy mackerel. <laughs> All right. So, speed brakes down. We'll get going here, and then we'll... Uh, since we got such a taxi here... 
Welcome to Driving Cargo Planes, folks. We're never usually in the easiest place to find spots. Kind of curious how they would have handled a 2-5 uh, left approach. Okay. Keep our speeds in check here for now. Auto brakes off. Let's see where we are in the checklist. All right, so after landing, landing lights. Oh yeah, that would be nice. Strobes to the off position. Wing lights off, landing lights off, any ice off. MCP reset, we're good with what we're set for. Light director is off. EFA set, transponder, Auto brakes, APU. All right, so. Well, folks, I hope y'all enjoyed the ride. Let's take a look uh, while we got this taxi underway. Well, I didn't get to see. What did we land at? No, I saw it with a number. Well, let's just try this one. 180 or 166 feet a minute. Why do I got a feeling the big Marcus won again? Yep, the big Marcus wins it with 188 feet a minute. <laughs> Where's G? Sorry, I'm just now getting into the chat, folks. Uh, I hope that was enough butter for you there, uh, Sketchy Leo. Jason? Well, Jason, you know, is Jason. And by the way, I'm not his keeper, so... <laughs> uh, he's been around. Uh, I've seen him in here a couple times. Hey, we still got a little ways to go. Just making sure on our taxi. Yeah. Um... He's out there somewhere lurking about, I'm sure. Okay, so we're coming up. Wow. Let's see. He said Kilo... One seven. Okay, so it'll be the second stand-in. Okay. And let you all see what we've got for a taxi. Came off here at November 7. Came uh, November Charlie 7. Whiskey Papa. Down Whiskey Charlie. Coming up on uh, Sierra, Sierra Pops 1. And we're going to be making another left. It's all left-hand turns. I had it all backwards. And that's what you get for leaving it with the pilot. I've already said it a couple times on the stream, but... Flying a plane is no different than riding a bicycle. Just a lot harder to put baseball cards in the spokes. So... 
that pretty well sums it up, I think, folks, as we taxi in. Next stream is scheduled for Monday. I'll get you the locations and times here in a moment. Uh, make sure I've got all the stuff ready to shut down. APU is up and running. We'll get it on GPU here in a minute. And let's come over to here. Okay, so next up is Monday. Oh, we're going to be flying from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania to uh, Mid-America Airport in an A320 for a Legion. Doing a charter run for them. So uh, that ought to be a blast. That'll be hopefully a kickoff time of 16 Zulu like normal. And uh, that ought to be a fun run. I'm starting to see the cargo facility now. Taking just as long to get here to taxi here. So, just a little further to go, folks, and then we'll be able to shut down and run the tape back and see what it looked like. Because for a while there, I wasn't even sure I was on the ground. Let's pull the charts out of the way. And folks, welcome again to Jakarta, Indonesia. Started into that turn a little early. But the good thing is a place like this that deals with 747s is set up for heavy aircraft. All right, so let's kick it. Get her moving in here. I'm gonna go ahead and kill the lights so we don't blind our marshaller. We got a pretty good sound kit with it. All right, so here we come. Go past it a little, give it a little goose in power.
All right, brakes are set. Let's get up here and get on the gens. See what happens up here. All right, bleed air is already on. I might just see something here. Oh, it did show us connecting over to the APUs. All right, that's cool. All right, folks, we're in the stand. Let's run the last bit of this. So parking brake, taxi lights off, clock stopped. Um, got APU on, we can kill our engines now. Oh, not that easy. Hang on. Okay. okay. Hang on, I'm just getting some stuff here. Just looking at Volanta and what they give. Okay. Okay, finishing it up here real quick, and then we're going to get into it. Uh, passenger signs off, fuel pumps off, hydraulics off. All right, uh, hydraulics off, ox. And anti-ice is already off. So, okay, folks, we are in the blocks. We're just uh, stop flight, file pyrep. All right, pyrep has been submitted. Yes. Okay, down to here, and now we need to, oh, Jakarta approach. Mac Air 572, we're in the stand at Kilo 6. Thanks for the ATC, have a great day. Okay, uh, sorry, Mac Air 572, no problem, sir, I don't think that, but hope you enjoy your time here, we'll see you next time. <laughs> see ya. See ya. All right, so now we can come off you. Make sure we don't have anyone tailing us. And let's uh, do that. Let me uh, set up for the outside of the plane here. Hang on a second. All right, um, what I'm going to do is bring Sim Toolkit back up. We haven't seen it much, but we're going to show the landing information. So it's not right here. All right, so basically, Sim Toolkit, and again, Melvin Leroy, thank you for pointing this out to me that I did not know was in Sim Toolkit for the year or so I've been using it. It's the landing report. You can see the icon right uh, over here to use. That'll put you right to these and then select the flight you want to look at. Now, the reason I like this page, right there is where I landed, folks. Granted, there's the aiming bar, the touchdown zone. I'm a little outside of it, but with 12,000 feet, I ain't worried about it. Now, the other thing it's going to tell you is your vertical speed, which we already knew, 166. Uh, how fast I was going, 146. A little fast, but that's cool. Um, and it should show pitch, and I'm trying to find it. There it is, 2.7 degrees up. So a good flare and uh, everything else, G4s, 1.25. So, I mean, really a solid, really good landing. And uh, so it's really a neat tool they got here in some toolkit. Uh, I want to go to the live map. First, he says cautiously. 
and I don't show any one tracking for here, so I'm going to go back to the flight summary page and finish my flight. Bear with me a second. I'm going to take that update real quick. Actually, I'll just download it. Do it after we're off stream. finally finished up there all right so we're going to come off fat sim because what we're going to do now is go into flight replay Hang on a second and on flight replay going to switch gears. Hang on a second here. I don't want to see where we are in this. Okay, so we're working our way to the runway. That's all I wanted to see. Get some appropriate music going as we watch the arrival. Already got the gear out and all. Come, folks. Actually, we were in the touchdown zone. Nice. I think it really looked pretty good, folks. I don't know about you. Uh, but it kind of looked pretty good to me. Shall we? Man. OK, 
Okay, Sketchy Leo, there's your butter. You got any jelly to go with it? Now, we're going to go to one of my favorites. That's one of my favorite views, folks. You really can't beat that we're going to see it again. The J Drums view. And again, another nice land. Wow. Well, let's take it back one more time. See what the tower shows us. Hi, folks. Well, this has been a fun run. I really have had a fun time flying this. ATC was phenomenal from Singapore over to Jakarta. Again, Monday, we'll be back at it, the uh, Airbus A320, flying from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, over to Mid-America. Hope you all can be there. Folks, from all of us here at uh, Flying with Mike, we do want to say thank you to, um, hang on a second, Big Marcus for resubscribing, uh, and also the Sketchy Leo. Thank you also for subscribing and resubscribing, folks. We sure appreciate it. That means more than you can imagine how humble it makes me. Folks, again, thank you so much for joining. And uh, hope to see you Monday. God bless. Have a great day. And I am looking for somebody to send the stream to. So bear with me here. Have out there. I know who we'll send it to right now. Hang on a second as I... Alright folks, I'm going to hand you over to Webgear. He's one of our uh, uh, folks that's with us and subscribes. And uh, we'll see how things go here. Hang on a second. Where did it go? There we go. And folks, we're now with Webgear. Hope you all have a great day. And uh, oh, we only brought in a party of one. Well, heck, I was hoping to bring in more. But, uh, hey, thanks for all for flying, and uh, we'll see you on Monday. Bye now.